Uh, greetings family, this is Bomani Taimba and welcome to our Africa Tour conference call for September 19th, 2021 and we're here to talk about our upcoming tour to Tanzania November 18th to the 29th and Ghana December 24th to January 5th and also we uh, have the details on the website for the Senegal and the Gambia April 2022 tour and the Ghana May 2022 tour, but uh, right now I just want to make sure that we just talk about the things that um, are coming up uh, so we can just get everyone that's on the call ready and get a good recording for those who are not on the call. Anyone that's traveling with us, all of the tour information as far as the full schedule is right there on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And once you get to the website, um, everything is on the main menu. So whether you use a desktop or a laptop or tablet or a phone, uh, the main thing is to just click on the main menu and then look for what you're looking for, and whether it's the tours or whether it's the Black Star uh, Repatriation and Pan-African Community. And everything is just detail on this um, website. So once you click on a relative link, you see relative articles that gives you the full details. And if you go from first article to the last one that will give you complete details. Uh, so what I try to do over the period of time is just go to as much as possible on those articles, but it's something that uh, everyone has to be able to uh, read through, and then when you're not clear about certain things, that's when we can just get into certain dialogue and explain it. So right now, I'm going to get uh, right to the point on the journey that we're taking, which is our Tanzania Roots and Culture Tour, November 2021. Once you're on that link, uh, you have access to the full overview, general terms and itinerary. What I'm going to go through is actually the overview. The overview uh, flows with the itinerary. So uh, I want to just remind everyone that uh, all these things that the tour packages includes, and this is the same and relative information for uh, all the packages. Uh, so you have an all-inclusive uh, package uh, for 3700 that includes your flights, international and also domestic, um, and that also includes um, your fare boat uh, transportation, and it includes all of your full accommodations, and that's uh, transportation and tours. It's, it's all taken care of. Uh, international flights are reserved on Delta slash KLM, and domestic flights are reserved on Air Tanzania. Uh, so we just, we'll go from one end to the next as far as this clearing reservations, as far as uh, international tickets and domestic tickets then ferry boat tickets. The uh, Air Tanzania flight is from Arusha to Zanzibar Island, and the ferry boat ride is from Zanzibar Island to Dar es Salaam. So that's your whole flow of your uh, transportation. And then everything else that we have is just uh, full accommodations. So we have everything broken down as four days in Arusha. Then you have uh, three days on Zanzibar Island and two days in Dar es Salaam. So it's just, the itinerary just laid out as this, this, uh, the best flow we can do as far as this uh, logistic to just avoid this unnecessary movement. So as we, fl as we fly from the U.S., we connect there right to um, Amsterdam on KLM. So once you have your, the email for your ticket, I recommend everyone just log into delta.com uh, and log into klm.com. Uh, any of us can have a combination of flights. Some of the flights, especially the flights even for the U.S., are, are Delta Airlines flight. Uh, but once you get internationally to Amsterdam, the flight is, this one flight is uh, KLM. Now, Delta Airlines and KLM have a coach year agreement. So, um, you know, you may, just because you book everything through Delta, this one make people, people be clear, make sure everyone understand that it's, uh, it's just a sequence of two different uh, airlines and different airplanes. So we have routes from different, you know, different people flying different places. So I don't know all the, the, the fine details as far as this, uh, what airplanes individuals are on, but once you log into your Delta booking, if you're trying to change a seat on there and you can't change it, it will reroute you just to go to klm.com and change the, the seats there because some are going to be in the Delta system and some are going to be in uh, the KLM system. Uh, so it's um, tricky stuff. And also some people won't be able to select seats until maybe two days before they, they travel and it automatically selects seats, or I should say it's an automatic seat selection. 
And then some people who log in with their Delta Sky Miles are able to just um, do all of their seats. The main seat that we have issues with at times is the flight that goes from Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro on uh, KLM. So once you um, log in there, the system that they have set up is they basically sell uh, seats ahead of time. So for those who want seats, if you're willing to pay for seats, you get the best options of seat. And then everyone else, uh, uh, within 48 hours of the flight, uh, seats are automatically assigned. And then you can log in and you can change it based on what's available. So different people are going to be in different situations. I recommend everyone to use their Sky Miles uh, login. And if you don't have one, sign up for one. And in the future, uh, you're able to just bypass some of these basic things that it limits you when you don't have a Sky Miles account. I select the seats so um, me and my son and made, made all of our setups on our booking and everything worked perfect, but I also, you know, we have our you know, Delta SkyMile priority, you know, which gives you a few additional options to just select seats in all of the flights um, and get first priority. That is, di is different situation for different people, but anybody gets stuck or have any issues, uh, just definitely call me and um, I'll, I'll assist you. I want to make sure that these things get done in sequence. And it's the same thing when we move forward towards uh, traveling to Ghana. We're going to just go through that same sequence as far as everyone send their information in, and then we just close out on the tickets, and then just close out on everything. And the goal is to just make sure everything is closed out about 45 days before we travel. And that will just give us a nice flexibility just to kind of get other things in order. Other things that are included is uh, breakfast is included and um, gourmet dinner. So it may be a buffet there at the uh, hotel, or it may be a situation where we just all come together and just go out somewhere and uh, order and eat. And sometimes in a situation where it's dinner or lunch, we may have to just do pre-orders. So all these things will be explained just literally the day before or the day off while we're there on the journey. And then you know, if we just want to say pick and choose uh, where we want to go for dinner and things like that or for lunch, uh, it's uh, all flexible. I just want to make sure that you know we get everyone accommodated. And based on the last journey that we did in uh, November 2020, it gives us a good idea of this, uh, some of our flexible options. And so the tour guides we have, they do speak uh, Swahili and a few other languages, and they'll be able to just um, translate for us uh, when we get into a certain situation. Uh, Tanzania is a former British colony. The main language is English. People may say it's Swahili. Uh, sometimes one of those debates, but uh, based the language, based on what the language when you go to court or the language when you go to law school, then basically the language that the law is connected to. And some people speak both, some people speak um, one or the other, but um, that's why we do tourism so we can just have all the accommodations to just make sure that uh, we can translate and make sure we can get things done. But most of the people that we're going to meet and connect with, uh, they do speak both English and Swahili. But once you start like leaving outside of like tourism bound or tourism zone, those things tend to change. Uh, so I can't really speak for folks who are going to want to venture up into the country and stay longer or want to just do certain things. But it's one of those things where you just do your best, um, you get your language app, and then we do have a tour book. We have a digital version uh, that you can just, you know, we have some good language translation, and we'll get the tour guides into this, getting us prepped for basic uh, communication in Swahili. Because what you're going to run into is when you, sometimes you meet people and they start talking Swahili to you. I had a phone call a few weeks ago. The person that started speaking Swahili to me and they said, I thought you were some Tanzanian speak Swahili because your name was Bomani. Uh, so that's the energy that you're going to get, a uh, nice welcome home energy. And as I scroll down, uh, all of the tour uh, accommodations itself is just, uh, all included. So, so museums or entrance to any activities and things that this are uh, all covered. So it's basically set up with a full package and the only thing that's not included uh, is the $50 group tips, uh, no lunch, and then if there's any camera, camcorder fee or things like that and uh, beach resort massage and individual beach activities, uh, those are the things that's not included. Other than that, everything else is included and naturally if you decide to do anything at night, uh, that's on you. And beyond that, that is uh, what the, you know, the flow of the tour package uh, uh, covers. So I try to just do something to where it just covers the majority of things, and that way when we get there, you know, we can just enjoy our journey. 
So while we're there in Arusha for the four nights, we're going to be staying at Kibo Palace. So I did have a link right there so you can check out the hotel. And while we're there for a few, four, four days, uh, we have a few different uh, things we're going to be doing. The main thing is the Arusha National Park. So that's not going to be one of uh, It's not like a center in Getty, safari, and things like that. You're at the National Park, and there are animals, and it's just a nice venture to the park. And it's a, it's a full-day uh, operation, so we'll, we'll do order for lunch and things like that, and we'll just make our way around the park. And, you know, it was... You know, it was a nice experience. I, you know, I recorded everything last year, so I have it right there on our YouTube page. For anybody that ever just want to check it out, and I try to do my best to make sure whatever we do is recorded, and we just have it to share, so individuals can just get an idea, if nothing else. Um, for those who just want that access, some people may not. Some people may just want more of a surprise, and that's also fine. Mount Maru um, volcano. So while you're driving around. Arusha, that's going to be the main mountain you're going to see. When you're leaving from the airport in Kilimanjaro uh, Airport, which is about an hour away from Arusha, you may get a good glimpse of the mountains or when you're either even coming in from the flight. Um, but for the most part, um, Mount Maru is what you're going to uh, see. Arusha City Tour, this basic uh, city tour, uh, we're going to go to the culture center. Uh, we have a school that we go to to donate uh, uh, school supplies. We're going to go to the Arusha National History Museum and the Arusha Declaration Museum. So that right there was, was like a nice few days in Arusha. And we're going to work in an option for a walking tour for those who want to do a walking tour. And that will be more than likely the morning before we leave if anyone want to go out. Um, that was offered uh, by the tour guide as an optional tour. Uh, no charge or anything, but you, go, you can always tip the uh, guides. And he just took a few people out. I was busy working on so far, business project and getting us ready to uh, depart later on that uh, afternoon. So that uh, is Arusha, beautiful this uh, getaway in Arusha. This is literally one of my favorite countries because it just offers this ultimate tourism experience. You start off in the mountains, then you work your way to the island of Zanzibar, then you hit the main land, the mad city of Dar es Salaam. All right, so let me just uh, move on to uh, what we're going to do next, uh, Zanzibar Island. So the way we're going to get to Zanzibar Island is uh, we're going to be we're going to fly from Arusha on Air Tanzania, and it's a short one-hour flight. And once we get to Zanzibar Island, we're going to land. It's not going to be in Stone Town, but it's going to be just a little bit south of Stone Town. But uh, you're looking at about an hour and 15-minute ride. We're going to take all the way up to the northwest part of the island at Kenwa and the hotel resort is Kenwa Rocks and that was the hotel that we had at full moon party uh, last year the flow of the schedule doesn't get to the full moon party you know, made some adjustments on the schedule uh, to just give us a more relaxed time there it was just, you know, it was a good experience but it was just too much going on for you know for our schedule and things like that uh, but yeah, that was a uh, you know one of those wonderful experiences. But once we get to um, once we get to Zanzibar Island, what we have on the highlights is Stone Town City Tour, old 17th century fort, the House of Wonders or Palace of Wonders, uh, which has collapsed. Uh, so you must be able to see the ruins. Uh, next one is the People Palace Museum, and then we're going to be in in the area where we're going to. I take a nice 30-minute uh, boat ride, and the reason I know it's 30 minutes because I recorded the entire journey uh, off to uh, Shangu Island, uh, a.k.a. Prison Island. So interesting stuff, uh, Prison Island, and also uh, giant tortoise on the island. Uh, so that's just to give you a nice little experience. Uh, the next day that we have there uh, when we're in, uh, on Kenmore Rocks, it's going to have a beach day, so what we're going to do is just uh, rent a boat uh, for about two hours, and it's going to take us out, you know, out, out into the uh, African uh, Ocean, and we're, you're going to be able to snorkel if you want to do things like that. So, the you know, basic um, water activity, and for those who want to do specific other activities, as I mentioned, you can just uh, reserve those things. But what we're doing as far as the boat is just a group activity, and they have a lot of individual activity, including uh, jet ski and and, you know, and things like that. So it's a, you know, nice little, just relax. It's a beautiful clear sand beach, aqua blue water, and the resort is just incredible. And also, once we finish there, 
on Zanzibar Island, we're going to head to the ferry boat. So I ask our tour guide to reserve VIP seats uh, for all of us. And what it is, it puts you in the top deck right by where pilot and the cockpit is, and you can just see through the, the, the very front. Uh, so you know, it's a nice little experience, and the chairs are just nice and relaxed. It's a short ride. You're looking at about an hour to about an hour and 15 minutes, uh, or hour to hour and 30 minutes. It's one of the faster ferries. Uh, so once we um, get to Dar es Salaam, we'll be there for um, uh, three nights, and it's a basic schedule, so it's not a whole lot of um, much going on. We have one full day of tour, and that's the National Museum Arts and Frame Gallery. Karakua Market, which we made us drive by, but as far as us, us going there as a group, that may not work, but we do have a, a day at the end where anyone wants to just go to the market in this, the final shop, and it's just literally a full day, and the goal is to go to the Village uh, Museum. And what we have is uh, lodging at the uh, Protea Hotel, uh, Dar es Salaam. So what you're looking at is a nice, uh, beautiful uh, schedule and these are real nice hotels. Um, the Marriott is a Marriott, but other two are black or African-owned uh, hotels. So we just try to make sure the itinerary is as black as it is, and we just do our best. It's um, you know, our best itineraries are put together. Uh, that you know, the only thing it does doesn't deal with things like investments and repatriation and things like that. You meet certain people and network and connect with certain people, but there's no business conference and there's no name and certain and things like that. For those people who used to seeing this, what we do in Ghana. This is just something that this designed to replace um, South Africa because we weren't able to go there uh, last year. And then it just worked out perfect uh, as far as the schedule and the things that we want to do. And now we just have it as, you know, what I'll keep on doing as long as people show interest. So family, that is uh, the tour overview, full Tanzania journey. And just want to make sure everyone know that uh, that is, you know, just make sure you're clear about the schedule and everything, and uh, we'll just do our best when we're in country to this. Text everybody in a group page what we're doing per day, uh, even though we have it in the digital book, and just go over it and things like that. And let's go to the main page of uh, this uh, tour. All right, so once you're back on the main tour, uh, you have the full itinerary, general terms, visa information, English to key Swahili language uh, translation, Improving your immune system, departure reminder list. Now, the main thing that I want to talk about on here is the departure reminder list. Um, I'm going to be updating it, and then I'll be sharing it on the group page, WhatsApp page. Um, and the goal is to just get the latest updates on all COVID protocols, COVID tests, and things like that, and just share it with uh, everyone. But the update is also going to be put on that list. Uh, so that list is something we're going to definitely talk about on the uh, next uh, conference call in detail. And all that is is once you print it out, it's a list of 30 things and almost everything that you can think of that you need to think of to get prepared for this journey and to be clear on is uh, in that documentation. Clear on is the visa information and uh, Tanzania visa is straight up just online. So once you click on the link, you're filling out an e-visa and you're just filling in the documentation and trying to just get processed to the end as best as possible. The main thing that you're going to need is to print out your a PDF version of your ticket so you can upload it to the system, scan your passport style photo, and scan your passport page, signature, and face page. And those are the three things you're going to need to upload to the system. Beyond that, the email that was sent, all of the inputs and the documentation that you would need, it's right there in the very email itself. You can just scroll all the way to, to the bottom. You see the name of the person that's um, connecting us or just uh, hosting us itself and all of the details, email address, address, and so on. So just recommend everyone to take their time and just, um, just have the email up. And then when you go into the application, just look to the left of it and you know, your email, and you literally just see all the answers you need. And if you get stuck somewhere, just uh, let me know. So I just want everyone to, to be clear that's traveling with us in November to just uh, go through this and just be clear on it. This is the schedule that we're going to and what we're working and things like that. And uh, anything that's important that I have to share, I'll post it in the group page. And the group page is just basically information only that I put information in the group page to just make sure that we're clear and we're prepared. And then also put it in there in the where if someone has checked the group page two days later, they can just literally still see the same information. 
All right, so family, I click on the link on the main menu for Ghana Repatriation and Investment Tour, December 2021. Tour flow is uh, set up the uh, same uh, way. The biggest thing that we have in uh, this channel work on all of the changes is our flight is going to be on Delta slash Air France, not Delta slash KLM. So all of our flights will be literally just routed to Paris. I do have the, the full schedule and flight numbers and everything and times on the itinerary. Uh, so right now, the, the main thing that uh, I need everyone to do, everyone has been doing it so far, so uh, perfect, is sending me the information that we need to do the tickets and make the arrangements and create a spreadsheet of all of the accommodations. Uh, so if anyone send me something, I just know that I got it. Uh, the only thing is just when I'm getting ready to work on everything, if I see that I don't have certain things, I'll definitely email or text you uh, so you don't have to uh, reset anything. And that's just how we did the same thing with this, all the other previous tours, just put it together and then just kind of work a pace to just get it done and then just work as a goal to just get everything paid for and completed uh, no later than 45 days uh, before the journey or no later than 30 to 45 days. And so basically just trying to get all the final things together in the last um, 30 to 60 days. And that way you just give yourself this a lot of time to just get other things done and you're not in this uh, rushing, rushing. So that's why I always recommend everyone get the visas two to three months before we travel and then just be clear on all the visa details. So when we're dealing with Ghana, uh, there's a few things. Ghana tour is out December 24th uh, to January 5th, so it's a full this in a holiday uh, schedule. That schedule there for this, anyone who just needs to use that time to travel. So both of the journeys I have is those sorts of holidays are a time frame where you just can use less of your vacation days or if you're in the school system or education system, you just literally you know, can have this you know, your flexibility of time to travel. So all of the uh, tours that we have, um, the full package our journey, you can do the land package without the flights, but the full package our journey will connect you from different parts of the U.S. and we'll all connect to Paris, France, and then from Paris, France, our dear Ghana, and while we're in Ghana, what's included is our transportation and tours throughout Ghana. That's going uh, from around the um, Accra and the, uh, the Great Accra and the Eastern region to the Central region and then to the uh, Shanti region and then back to um, Accra. Uh, so the journey takes you to three different hotels over 10 days and it's just spread out and we're just going to go through some of the things that's listed on the overview for per city. Uh, so what's included, for, we're looking for, always looking for volunteers. We want to volunteer to do exercise and meditation in the morning for those who want to get up early and just get their stretches and things like that. Uh, but it's just a volunteer situation. Uh, daily breakfast and gourmet dinner is included. And just like our other journey, uh, we have uh, situations where we just order, uh, pre-order uh, dinner buffet based on everybody's uh, diet. That's why we ask for on the... Uh, you know, whatever paperwork we send out to get your accommodation details on uh, what's your diet. That way, when we do pre-organize our buffet, it includes all the things that everybody eats as best as possible. The big thing about uh, the Ghana Journey is the Business and Investment Conference, also have a citizenship conference, and it deals with uh, not only the citizenship, but also residency, work permit, um, things that you need to just be in the country and, and have organized before you can legally do a, a bunch of things, you know, like legally stay past two months because your visa may show five years, but you can't stay in the country straight for five years. Uh, before I thought it was three months, but now I'm told, based on a few people that stay back, as two months. So you're in a situation there where you may need to stay longer to do certain things. So that's when we just recommend, instead of doing a visa extension, you can also do a residency and renew your residency annually, especially if you're going to continue to do business in the country. So those are some of the things that that conference has go to in full details. And then for those who are just ever interested in those things or need assistance and they're with us on the journey, uh, you can just reach out to me and I'll help you as best as possible. All right, so the things that are not included is the uh, $50 group tips um, per person, um, so any camera, camcorder fees, and then uh, lunch is uh, not included. And we just do 
the best we can do is uh, find somewhere where we're going to have a nice organized lunch. The situation will change as we drive through the country because, you know, the options are limited sometimes when you're moving to certain areas or region. But the goal is to have an organized game plan based on this, our experience to make sure that uh, we have those things worked out. And these are things that we'll be communicating with you uh, throughout the journey, especially ahead of time, like the night before or the morning, because uh, everything has to be ordered and organized ahead of time. And then uh, your visa situation, uh, if everyone is traveling, what I always recommend is just do a multiple entry uh, visa, which is for $100. And the minimum that you'll get on a multiple entry is one year, and the maximum that I've seen is five years, but there's no guarantee of five years. And most of the time what I've seen people get now is like three, four, or five years. Right, and as you scroll down to um, what we're going to be doing in Ghana, and just like Tanzania is broken down into three different parts, uh, so you have Accra, we did for four days, Cape Coast, Elmina, three days, and then Kumasi, three days. So while we're doing Accra, we're going to enjoy a beautiful city tour that includes uh, Black Star Independence Arch. We're going to go to W.E.B. Du Bois uh, Center, George Padmore Library, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the Arts uh, and Culture Center. We're going to drive to the University of Ghana. And also we're going to head up to the mountains, which is more so the eastern region, but we have a Orphanage that school that's called Trinity Home Academy, and that's in Tutu. Then we're going to connect to the uh, Avery Botanical Garden and also Avery Wood Carving Village. So for those who are looking to shop for wood carving, that's our destination right there, where you just have the time you need uh, to shop and get your wood uh, carving. And then the art center, that's where you just you can get all different aspects of arts and craft that's made in the country. So. The day we do a city tour in Accra is they just have access to a whole lot of shopping. Uh, when we drive to the mountains, we're also going to drive by Rita Mali Foundation and uh, Rita Mali Studio. It's just an iconic location, even though the studio is burnt down. But uh, we just drive by and just you know, explain a few things. One of the last things that we have and biggest thing is just our Repatriation Investment Conference, uh, which is the title of the journey. And it's an in-depth conference where I have a nice staff or group of people, presenters, uh, which includes people that have repatriated to Ghana and people who have just, or Ghana business people, and you have representation from this uh, attorneys are explaining the legal aspects of living, just living and doing business. And it just go into details as far as, and it just has a lot of networking also. Uh, so it's something that uh, I've been putting together since uh, 2006. Uh, as basic as it can get from that point to you know, something a lot more organized and high-tech. And all of the conferences are recorded, uh, especially in the last 11 years. And what I've done in the last two ones is just record the full conference. So it's just one solid video before it just used to be more so clips. Uh, so it's, you know, it's just full of information. But for those who are looking to do many things in Africa, these are things that just help you get set up, get you connected, and you know, get you to move to the country where you can actually just have a peace of mind and things are smooth for you. You have people who just get up and make a move and don't have any of these things organized. When they get there, they complain about the country and complain about things. But we'll, at the end of the day, the only, only people that they can blame is themselves. Uh, Ghana is not that perfect country, but I've been to many parts of Africa. It's, um, and it's just you know, my, you know, my opinion, my views on Some people may find other countries uh, much better and work for them. But for all the things that me... A business partner, my family, and just uh, people who are close to us, what we're trying to do in Africa, and Ghana is like a perfect uh, energy and a perfect location. So that business uh, conference just represent this, us um, connecting and being clear before we move forward with any other thing that we're looking to do. And then if you're looking for you know, organize or good people to work with, you know, those are the people that we have in our inner circles to where we can just literally help people. only thing that we tell everyone is that it's just what it is. It's a service-based society, so people are doing business services and they're looking to get paid. So it's one of those things where if you ever need a quote, get a quote. Um, but uh, it's, we you know do our best to just try to just help and connect you. But we just want to make sure that everyone get taken care of uh, both ways. The people who provide the work and also for the people looking to just get settled and organized. And it's just one of those things you have to deal with sometimes about. Uh, prices and things like that. So um, the host or the people that we have there, we just they just usually do their best to just help you negotiate, and help you just work things out. So that's the the beauty of just having just a full network connection. And as I mentioned earlier, the Black Star Pan African community is literally literally our future investment of our land community, which 
um, when you live in Accra, you're going to be able to do a full tour of the community and you'll be able to see houses going up. And, uh, and everyone can remember uh, literally two years before this, uh, which you know, it was uh, December 2019, you know, we just was walking on the land and kind of like walking like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So family, December when we get to the Black Star Pan African community, it's going to be literally two years. And then you know, first, I just remember us just walking on the land. It was just raw and nothing there. And we just we work together. It's a group of skippers work together and build the process little by little. And got all our legal paperwork, got our individual paperwork and things like that in place. And learn the legal process of how to acquire land, uh, get it uh, cleared, get it set up and things like that, so it was a beautiful two-year lesson. So you're going to be able to meet the chief and be able to meet his uh, staff and members of the community, and you're going to be able to see a public bathroom that was built by one of our members, a husband and wife that came with us in Ghana in December 2019, and now they actually live on the land, and they just finished their house as of this month. And it's a fast process, but yes, they literally came on the journey December 2019. They moved to Ghana September of 2020, and they literally start building just a few months ago as, as of uh, this year. So just within all of that is like within like less than uh, two years, like a little bit over a year and a half. I mean, they were just ready and prepared, but it was you know, showing people that our system work as far as connecting people to Africa and getting them set up and making sure they have all of the things that they need uh, based on the network that we have built coming up on 15 years of this, uh, doing tourism business in Ghana. Uh, so uh, anyone that's interested in that community or want more details, when you go to the main menu of our website, you can just click on Black Star Pan-African Community, and then you open it up, you see a lot of information. And that's me, I'm the information person. But I believe that we need to be clear about life decisions. Like this is, like most of these things are just, you know, they're not just, they're big, they're big decision that involves a, a lot of finance, and everyone has to process it. So I do my best to put out as much information. So. Before anyone even talk to me, if they want to, they can just leave you look over everything, and or they can call me, and we can go through it. Um, the, but the main thing is that you just want people to be clear because you just see a lot of times people making decisions where they're just making a decision emotionally instead of just planning it out. And we want to make sure that when they come into the journey with us, or you come into this, be a part of the community, that you're clear and then you're committed to what we're doing, and we do our best to this make ourselves available and let's go through everything. And we, all we ask is everyone to do is just to be the best team players because, you know, this is, you know, it's one of those team sports that we're looking to show our best energy in Africa uh, because everything on the continent is tribal to a certain point. Um, and, you know, when we're coming from the dance, we just have to look as organized as best as possible. And it just makes things a lot easier for us to work with our own folks in Ghana and other parts of Africa and just uh, connect. So that's um, you know, my experience of being there. And what I'm doing is sharing all of my experience from being in Ghana and all my connects and you know, the people that we have taking care of things so everyone can just feel comfortable. So be free to just um, ask any questions about these things once you open up and I'll just uh, go through it. Now the last two things um, is uh, Elmina and Cape Coast. So uh, we're not going to the Elmina Holocaust Dungeons, but we're going to Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeons. For those who want to go to Elmina Holocaust Dungeons, they can go on an optional, and they can you can re like replace your canopy walk with um, going to Elmina, and we we'll just find you know we we'll just find a vehicle there at one African. For those who want to go, they can go to the second dungeons the next day. Uh, but what we have set up is just a presentation where we're not rushing to leave in the morning, and when we get there, we can just take our time and just connect uh, to the ancestral spirit and find out and you know, connect, make our connection is what we're looking to do and then anyone that needs time to do whatever, you just have time there. So that's what I've organized over the period of time to where we process it all. And then once we finish, uh, we're going to be there at One Africa. So you're going to be able to just relax and clear your mind. And uh, we'll have a you know, naming ceremony later. And the school is not going to be open there in Elmina, but the orphanage will be open there in Jahadzia, as I mentioned earlier. But at One Africa, we still have, um, you know, it's a community, so we we'll still do our donations. So you know, those who want to bring any kind of donations for the children, uh, we have both of those locations.
Elmina and also uh, Jahadzi in the town of our Black Star Pan-African community. The, the biggest thing that uh, we have there, um, uh, before I get to the biggest thing, we do have a, the, the, the canopy walk, so I mentioned to people, if you do want to come to the canopy walk, make sure that you have you know, some nice um, hiking type shoes uh, to you know, work your way up there. Make sure that you're in top notch shape. Uh, other than that, I just recommend that you can relax on the beach, you can get massages, all kind of things. Uh, it's just a perfect getaway uh, there at One Africa. The, the, the grand finale of things out of Reverend Elmina is that beautiful New Year's uh, party. So New Year's Eve, we'll literally be doing a nice, um, beautiful party of bonfire and everything, and we're going to invite the people in the community. Uh, those of us uh, that's looking to the spring of New Year's in Africa, this is just a perfect uh, connection. Uh, so once we finish there in uh, Cape Coast, Elmina, uh, we're going to head up to Kumasi, and then the schedule is going to get a lot lighter. Uh, we're also staying at the Micklin Hotel uh, in uh, Kumasi. They have worked out this nice accommodations for us to just get there and relax. And both hotels are in a great location as far as our movements. Uh, so once we in Kumasi, we're going to go to uh, a few craft villages so you can just get your shopping on. Uh, we're also going to go up to the Palace Museum and take you around the, the beautiful city of Kumasi. Uh, the next uh, culture center is right there in Kumasi, so you're going to be able to just do your uh, final shopping because um, once you finish it in Kumasi, we're literally just heading back to Accra for a flight. Uh, so all of your final shopping, you can just plan it out there in Kumasi for those three days. We have a wonderful um, uh, restaurant that we eat lunch at uh, both times, and that's uh, Ike's uh, Cafe. So I've done a few videos with uh, Ike's Cafe, so we have this even nice um, dining and and it's a nice little relaxed environment. And you know, later on, if anyone wants to come out there and swim with us, we usually just have a nice little gathering around the pool, and some of us are swimming, and some of us are playing cards and dominoes and relax, relaxing. So uh, you know, the itinerary is set up to where it's very social and give you this a nice education experience in the country. I right, so family, before going into too much beyond that, those are just our full like overview schedule of both our upcoming um, Tanzania and uh, Ghana journey. So let me just uh, open up for our questions. Uh, that way we don't enjoy this thing out too long. And it's so much more information that I love to go over. And that's why I have to just break this thing up. But uh, most important once everybody read everything, uh, when we go over a few basic things, you just everything just to click. And when you're doing the country, everything is just flow nice and smooth. All right, so family, let me just get everybody out of uh, lecture mode. So family, the mute all mode, uh, you can just uh, click on star six to unmute yourself. And once you uh, unmute yourself, just give your name. Uh, we call them from what journey you're traveling on. Well, good evening, Bamani. This is me, Anthony. I'm going on a Ghana trip in D.C. I just want to know what's the weather going to be like. Uh, man, it's going to be tropical, like tropical paradise, uh, 80 degrees, and you have a limited amount of rain in at that time. The rainy season is basically coming to an end. I remember the last time we were there, nothing but sunshine. So it's like going into the summer? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, all, it's always summer there. Um, the colder part would more so be during the rainy season, so... It's more closer to the, the summer that you know it as, but not hot and humid. That's what I mentioned about 80 degrees tropical and cool. And at the same time, to bring all kind of clothing, especially when you're traveling on the, the flights, you know, and white folks turn that AC up on you or turn up the air on you, uh, you're going to make sure that you need to carry a jacket. But naturally, it's going to be cold for some people living from some states. And when we get to Ghana, you know, you want to just, bring with you day clothes, and also if you decide to go out tonight or when we do some social events, you may want to dress up a little bit. So you're going to, you know, pack a little bit everything. And those who are looking to swim, bring your swim gear. So yes, Anthony, let me know if I answer your question if you have another question. Yeah, did you get my information? Uh, yes, I got a text from you. I was trying to get you to email it, but uh, the text will work. Um, I'll make a note that it's on the text. I'll be working on putting it together in a spreadsheet, but it's all good. I got it. 
Yeah, I, I text you and email you. Okay, perfect, guys. So it's in the loop of email. Perfect. And you're flying from um, uh, Jersey or you prefer New York? It don't make a difference. Whichever is more convenient. All right, perfect. Thank you. I'm going to be working on those things um, towards the end of the month or the beginning of the month. Okay. All right, perfect. Yeah, I look forward to connecting with you in uh, Los Angeles, Ghana. I remember that wonderful journey we did in South Africa. All right, so family, the line is open uh, for questions about the um, journey with us this year to Ghana and Tanzania. Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Valerie. Hi, Bilmani. Uh, greetings, Valerie. Hi, I, uh, I will be traveling with the um, Ghana trip in December. And uh, I, I was a little late getting on, but it, you mentioned during the itinerary that we would be traveling to Prom Prom. By chance? Oh, no, that's, uh, no, it's not by chance. It's on the schedule. It's always on our, our schedule. Uh, we have three tour days in Accra, and um, going to Prom Prom is one day. Going up to the mountains in the eastern region is another day, and then going to the city tour is another day. So those are the three sequences we have, and they're all about 45 minutes an hour away. Depends on where we, how we're moving, or should I say closer to 45 minutes. So, yes, we'll be doing a full day in uh, Prom Prom once we get there. And we're just going to do our, our routine, do the wall presentation, and just enjoy a beautiful uh, lunch. Okay, awesome. I'm, I'm excited and looking forward to it. Yeah, perfect. And maybe we'll get a volunteer to show their house. Oh, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> and people always talk about them. I like to show people house. But uh, I, I think it's a great inspiration to live in America and then you're just there in Africa and you're living in your house and you show us that, you know, that, we have options. Absolutely. So, perfect. I don't know if you have another question also. And let me know if you are just ready to go. I'm ready to go. So, yeah, I'm going to get off and let someone else speak. But definitely, I'm excited. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And I'll keep you and everyone posted. All right. Our next person, um, uh, can you just uh, give your name, where you're calling from, and your question? Ms. Cooper, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Hi, Brother Bamani, and thank you for everything that you're doing. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate you. Um, I want to go in December, but I'm not sure. I won't be sure until the middle of October. Would that be too late? Uh, no, that won't be too late. We'll just kind of add you on. What I'm trying to do is get as much done as possible, and then those who want to come on, we'll just add them on as best as we can. And just okay. try to just be prepared to pay for a single supplement. Uh, for a single room? Uh, yes, in case we can't find a roommate. Okay. All right. Thank that's, you so much. Yeah, that's the only thing I would say about uh, if you just come in after two months. Because okay. everything's been signed already. And let me ask you, just in case I can't go, I have to go in May. Is that the rainy season in May? Uh, it's uh, more of the cooler season. Uh, we still don't have an issue where we just – it does rain, but um, I can't say like, it rains on a tour day because that usually doesn't happen. It just usually just rains a little bit here and there. Because uh, we're not that far into the rainy season, that's the good thing about it. So okay. So uh, we're at the schedule to where we you know, end early in June. Okay. All right. Thank you, and God bless you. All right. Absolutely appreciate you. All right, Green family. I'm ready when the next person have a question, and I can stay on up until 8:30. I can get off earlier. So as long as the uh, individuals have questions, I can stay on and answer them, and I can dialogue on anything anyone wants me to talk about in detail or clarify. As of this uh, moment, our uh, family, what I have, um, and I have it typed up in a nice little dialogue, so let me just retrieve it and uh, read it off. And this is a message I can, um, and you know, I guess I'll repost it um, in the group page also. And the first thing we talk about is the plan for the visa. But as far as the COVID uh, situation, uh, we have to take a uh, COVID uh, PCR test to get on the flight itself. So we have to take that to where it, the results are within 72 hours of the actual flight departure. Uh, so the best thing I usually recommend is to um, go get the test two days before you travel and go to a location where it's a 24 hours just return. That way, when you get it, um, you'll be 
in you know in, in good time frame to where even if something happened in you can literally just have you know you're not taken by the hour you just you have a full uh, day itself uh, so that's what I recommend uh, everyone doing I recommend everyone find a location that's going to give them free testing and save your money because the next uh, COVID test that you have to take is going to be in Ghana and that's $150 and you're going to have to once you go to globalhaven.org you'll be able to uh, literally upload your first COVID test the situation for Ghana is you have to go to FrontierHealthCare.com. It's a strange situation, but it's a banking website and a process uh, your your COVID test for 150. Now, the best thing I recommend um, for you to do is to make sure you have a PDF version or have the email saved, and um, definitely make sure you print a copy of these things. So you can do either or, definitely at least one or the other. Uh, that way. All of these things are supposed to be in their system, so for them to verify, that's things you just don't want to trust. Agents uh, that are in the U.S. has to verify some of these things before they get you on a flight. Uh, it's supposed to be the main flight that takes you. Uh, yeah, so once you get to Paris, uh, the agents are going to verify that you have the code test paperwork that you paid for on FrontierHealthCare.com, and also. They're going to verify your COVID test uh, that you took in the, for it to be in the system. Uh, so based on what I was telling you, what you do, taking it two days ahead of time, it will give you more than enough time for once you get to Paris, uh, you'll be able to be clear within that 72 hours because it's based on also the results. So you'll basically be getting the results 24 hours before you leave your U.S. flight. And the last thing that you have to fill out is a health declaration uh, form. I'm just forwarding that to the Ghana December 2021 tour group and you can just check that out uh, in details and also that's based on what we had to go through last time in Ghana in May uh, so family once again make sure that you save it to your phone and also print a copy out of uh, those three, three things that I mentioned the health declaration form your COVID uh, test and also your COVID US test and your payment for your COVID test there in Ghana. All right, so hopefully that uh, answers uh, questions relative to that. Uh, so, anyone have any uh, questions about uh, what I just explained now? Uh, let me know. And I'll just, you know, I can just answer as best as possible. Uh, so, the other thing that uh, I sent out every time we do this conference call is a newsletter. Some of the information is repetitive, but the newsletter have all of the links and just all of the just uh, general details. On top of the uh, conference call email, I sent out this um, a newsletter for the actual tour itself. And so these are just detailed presentation just to give you information and make sure you're clear on things, you're prepared and you're ready. And uh, that's the best we can you know, literally do to have information uh, for you to check out and be clear on. There's uh, lots of pictures and videos. I'm, I'm always uploading pictures and videos of our journey. So there are over 2,700 videos and who knows what, how much uh, photos on Facebook and things like that. But just try to just share our experience as best as possible. Uh, it's one of those amazing things that's being able to just you know, reconnect to your roots we're returning and building a, a strong future. So journey I enjoy sharing with those of us and always just ready to get uh, you know t to the African continent again and just keep working on, working on the future until we just get there set up and run operations you know, from uh, the continent uh, in the next few years. So family, anyone else have any questions? This uh, stuff six to meet yourself. Mr. Bomani, I just want to say thank you for being so organized. Well, I appreciate you. It's the only way to flow. If you're trying to get maximum success, I appreciate you. And we are almost there, three months away from your magical Ghana journey. And I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share on the visa process or anything? Because, you know, you were able to get it done, and it seemed like with no problem. It was no problem. Um, the information that you provided us, the example, that was very helpful. But um, they made the process easy because I had ordered 
a money order, but it wasn't needed. They wanted me to pay online. And so the process was a lot easier. And it did not, I think it took three weeks for me to get it back from them. All right, perfect. So you printed off all your documents that you filled out online, and then you put it together with all the Correct. information and then mail it in the prepaid envelope? That is correct. And, and I uh, provided them uh, with the receipt of the prepaid. And, you know, because once you prepaid it, you know, and you get the receipt, I also copied that and sent it to them. They didn't request that, but I did it anyway to show proof that I had done it. Perfect. That sounds painless. Yeah, it, it is. It's very painless. But you're probably also probably real good at following directions. I am. <laughs> That's funny. I am. Yeah. Terry yeah. taught us well. Yeah, perfect. This tends to be the, the boring side of what people think about when they think about a journey. Um, and I know it's like, you know, yeah, we have to co conference call, but, you know, it's just, you know, the preparation makes things better. When you get to the country, you're prepared, and you, you see the people who are prepared versus the people who are saying, where's the mall? I need to go get this. I need to go get this. So I tell everybody, just order everything ahead of time and get international power outlets and you know, universal adapters and things like that and just uh, be prepared to just enjoy every minute of it. And just, you can get all the rest you want to get once you get back. Indeed. Somebody have a, a question about Paris. Uh, yes, uh, if you take the test two days before you fly from the U.S., by the time you get the results back, you will be, you're going to be within limits. You're within limits of once you go take the test itself, the COVID test. So you're not going to run out of time. So I just want everybody just to be clear on that, uh, for everybody to please take the test two physical days before we leave. So that is going to be December 22nd. Once you get your result back on December 23rd, we're going to be in Paris on December 25th in the morning. And we're going to leave out that afternoon. So you're within time frame. And so family I'm also looking at the newsletter and it's just, you know, it's presentations and presentations. So what that means to me is that a lot of people read the information and everyone is clear. So most people don't have any questions. So it's all Somebody? good. Oh, go ahead. Excuse me, I have a question. <laughs> I have one in regards to, I don't know who was speaking about with the visa. When um, I look at the information and it says, of course, with the passports and the um, submit your passport, the application itself, and the uh, photo ID, I guess the part I have a question about is uh, the supporting documents. Other than that, which would be included, I saw it also on the website as well, the um, Africa, African for Africans. That's uh, perfect. Uh, so if you need an invitation letter, I can get you an invitation letter and a compliance uh, letter uh, for immigration. And then you can, since you're, we, we haven't finalized our tickets, I can just get you a flight itinerary that you can use uh, and also let's put in the package. Oh, so okay. Those are, those are the three things you're talking about, right? It said supporting documents. I wasn't sure what that was. All right, let me get uh, Dr. Austin uh, quick. Uh, let me know if you're open. Yes, I'm here. Yes, you're one of the most recent person I've done the visa, and they'll change this thing so many times I, I can't keep up with what, how it's done. Are you required to upload the PDF files to the actual system, or are you just required to put it in the package to send, as far as a compliance letter, the... Uh, I had to put them in there. Those are the supported documents. Perfect. I could thank yeah. you for confirming uh, for confirming okay. that. Uh, so, um, this value I'm speaking to, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, value, what I'll do is just make a note to this email it to you in the morning. Okay. Anyone else that's uh, looking to travel with us, once you get ready to this, need certain documents, just uh, send me a message, and I'll just try to. Just, my goal is just to do them as they come through. Also, Valerie, what was you saying? Um, that that answered it. I was just uh, wasn't sure what the supporting documents were, but that would be it. And I got through and completed the application, but um, I was going to pay and print it out. I just wanted to make sure that I had all the supporting documents that I needed in order to submit it. 
to mail it. Uh, perfect. So, yes, uh, I seem like you have everything in order, so uh, with the exception of what I need to send you. So that's perfect. So I appreciate that. Uh, happy you was able to get through it. I know it's a long process. I did because there were some concerns about having to include the uh, yellow card because it mentions it in the in the beginning, but once you go through the application process, it's listed there, but it's not checked as required. <laughs> yes, I was very concerned about that. So, um, yeah. So otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get that done, and and I'll work on securing whatever I need. I had to send my. I had to send the yellow card, the shop records, to prove that I uh, took the yellow fever. Did you? Wow. I saw mm -hmm. it was listed, but it didn't have an asterisk next to it. It was a couple of things that didn't have an asterisk next to it. So mm -hmm. it, I figured if it didn't have an asterisk, it said required. I was like, I won't touch it. But you yeah, think that? I agree. I guess they might have changed it. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe required, but not recommended. And so, um, yeah, maybe it recommended but not required. Excuse me. Yeah, it, it's required um, before they allow you to go through the gate to get into the country. You have to have the yellow fever. So, the, so now I'm clear about what the, the application is saying. So the application is mentioned all the things that you're going to need, but in this case, it's not required for you to apply for the visa itself. But you need to have it on, up on entry into the country. And mm -hmm. for those who don't have it, uh, what you do is. Uh, they'll just give you a cost for one, and they'll just work it out for you. Yeah, so I guess they changed it a little bit because when I did it, it was required. And so That's I'm, I'm really glad what I read. Changed. I thought so too. Yeah, I'm glad. But I'm at the changed. end where it says pay the money, and uh, well, it it just said it didn't have the asterisk, so I'm hoping that mm -hmm. <laughs> that will work. Yeah, just, uh, you know, just uh, do your best. Uh, I've not filled out a new one yet, um, but uh, every time I turn around, every time I've done mine, a lot, of, a lot has changed. But you know, which is a good thing. They're trying to go more digital, and soon, you know, they'll be able to do like what Tanzania does, where it's just all digital and online. So, family, do your best to fill out uh, what is there on the uh, visa as best as possible, because right now, um, all of us should be looking to start working on our visa, uh, and. Recommend everybody just select multiple entry. Uh, it's not really worth it with a single entry. It was just Ghana is so nice. You definitely want to do it at least twice. All right, let me see who is on this call. There's a lot of folks on this call. So I guess everybody is literally clear and ready for the next two journeys that we have this year. And remember, uh, if you just want to get yourself uh, excited for the, the, the journey, I have all of the videos of the previous journey that's right there on YouTube. So, um, and it's set to where you can click on play all from the playlist and it'll just play all the journeys. So the key thing when you're on the YouTube, uh, it's the playlist and then if you play all, no commercials in it, it's just designed to, just, to see our, our whole walkthrough of our journey from the beginning to the end of every tour that we've done, especially in the last uh, 10 years. So, family, the journey for a lifetime continues. I appreciate everybody joining us. Unless someone else has another question, I'm going to just click on open uh, mode, and then everyone will be able to hear each other, and we just continue the journey, and we'll continue any kind of communication about the journey on the WhatsApp group page, so do look out for any kind of posts and anything that I'm sharing as far as updates. But right now, the COVID protocol details are on there for December 2021, uh, Ghana journey. Hello, Bumani. This is Keisha calling from Boston. I have a quick question. For the embassy, um, the Ghana embassy that is in New York, do they allow uh, individuals to upload a copy of their passport, or do they require that people put it in the mail and send it to them? Or would they allow the person to come in person to give it to them? Uh, yes, you can do a drop off and a pick up, but as far as um, you can't mail a copy of the passport, the passport has to have the visa stamped physically in it. Uh, so that's the difference between the Ghana visa and the Tanzania visa. Tanzania visa, it's, uh, you know, it's, you can just, it's, a, it's an email that's sent with a PDF document and you just print it off and then you just bring it with you. 
But you, as you, so I recommend uh, if you don't want to let your passport to go, to literally physically go up to a New York uh, concert or the D.C. embassy and do a drop-off service, and then you'll be able to pick it back up within the time frame that it may give, which should be about 10 to 20 days. Uh, depends on the you know, holiday time coming up. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, uh, you're welcome. I family, I appreciate everyone uh, coming out and joining the call. And uh, I'll keep everybody posted, and I'll be on standby if anyone needs to uh, speak with me. Other than that, I'm working on all the things that we talk about. So you take care. I'm going to open mute mode. Thank you, and take care. All right, uh, family, take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. Okay, you too. Thank you. You try yeah, too as well. Thank you, Bomani. Thank you, Bomani. Thank you, Bomani.